guns are quiet now, the papers of peace have been signed. And the oceans of the earth are filled with ships coming home. In faraway places, men dreamed of this moment. But for some men, the moment is very different from the dream. Here is human salvage, the final result of all that metal and fire can do to violate mortal flesh. Some wear the badges of their pain, the crutches, the bandages, the splints. Others show no outward signs, yet they too are wounded. This hospital is one of the many for the care and treatment of the psychoneurotic soldier. These are the casualties of the spirit, the troubled in mind, men who are damaged emotionally, born and bred in peace, educated to hate war. They were overnight plunged into sudden and terrible situations. Every man has his breaking point, and these, in the fulfillment of their duties as soldiers, were forced beyond the limit of human endurance. On behalf of the commanding officer and his staff from Mason General Hospital, I want to extend a hearty welcome to all of you on your return to the United States. There is no need to be alarmed at the presence of these cameras, as they are making a photographic record of your progress at this hospital from the date of admission to the date of discharge. Here are men who tremble, men who cannot sleep. Men with pains that are nonetheless real because they are of mental origin. Men who cannot remember. Paralyzed men whose paralysis is dictated by the mind. However different the symptoms, these things they have in common. Unceasing fear and apprehension. A sense of impending disaster. A feeling of hopelessness and utter isolation. May I have your last name? I, how do you spell that? M-E-I. Is that the last name? Please. Follow. The psychiatrists listen to the stories of the men who tell them as best they can. The names and places are different. The circumstances are different. But through all the stories runs one thread, death and the fear of death. And then after you get wounded, what happens? Same thing, only worse. Um, mm -hmm. Like the uh, nerves keep getting worse. No. They get the worse. They nerve pain. They bond. which the drug will attempt to diminish. Like the man who could not walk and the man who could not remember, his illness has an emotional basis. 
we're all comfortable now and relaxed. We're just going to give it some medicine here, and it's going to help number out that tongue of yours. And this is going to make it feel a bit groggy. Well, let's help me out. How do you feel now? Hmm? Make any difference to your feeling? Oh, it's just like the seventh heaven. What is it? Tell me about it. What? I can talk. That's fine. I can talk. <laughs> I can talk. Listen, I can talk. Oh, God, listen, I can talk. Oh, this mother in law, oh, God, listen. So this movie uh, was actually not released until recently because the U.S. government thought it would be, it would turn public opinion against war. So its release was suppressed until recently. Now it's actually available on YouTube. Yeah, on YouTube. So I highly recommend seeing the entire thing. So narcosynthesis has been around for quite a while. Therefore, Medicare actually currently covers it, although it is only in the most severe cases and extremely rare in the United States today. In fact, Medi-Cal, which is the Medicaid of California, lists it as a non-benefit and not even a service that you can request uh, as an exception for, for coverage. So they simply don't cover it. And then private insurance typically follows Medicare because they know Medicare has the strictest guidelines. So it's 
probably reimbursable, but you would need to check with your individual plan because plan coverage is highly variable in the private insurance world. So let's talk about Medicare's coverage of drugs. As long as there's no statutory restriction or a CMS national coverage decision or a Medicare administrative contractor local coverage decision that excludes the drug or service from coverage, then the following criteria is what's necessary in order for it to be covered by Medicare. It has to be FDA approved and used at the published dose and frequency or it's listed in one of the Medicare approved compendia. They have five compendia that each has a different level of evidence of efficacy. Or it has to be uh, reviewed by the Medicare administrative contractor because Medicare doesn't actually run, they don't manage any of the claims. They farm that out to uh, Medicare administrative contractors. And so in the state of California, Ours happens to be Noridian, and when you submit that request, you're expected to provide very significant peer-reviewed articles to convince them that it is indeed efficacious and works, uh, is appropriate for the particular patient that you are requesting it for. And the use is not listed as unsupported, not indicated, or not recommended in any of those compendia. So MDMA psychotherapy is currently considered an investigational drug. It is also a Schedule I drug, which makes it very difficult to, to research in the first place. And Schedule I drugs are defined as drugs that currently have no accepted medical use and a high potential for abuse. So if you were going to deliver this service to a patient, you would actually use an, you would use an unlisted CPT code um, and the patient would have to pay cash for it. So eventually we want to have a specific CPT code for MDMA <coughs> assisted psychotherapy. And the AMA, which is the American Medical Association, controls the publication of CPT codes. There are three levels of CPT codes. We're only going to talk about uh, the first and third, there's a second level that isn't relevant to this. And it is, the service or procedure has received a approval from the FDA and that suggested service is also a distinct service performed by many physicians across the United States and that the efficacy of the service is well established and documented in US peer-reviewed literature and that the service is neither a fragmentation of an existing service nor con currently reportable by one or any other existing codes and that the service, in the service is not requested as a means to report extraordinary circumstances related to the performance of a service code that already exists. So one method, which is very, uh, we're, we should prob uh, probably seek, is getting a category three code. It's a temporary code. So it's represented by four digits and a T. These codes are only active for about five years unless you ask for a revision. And at that point, uh, the expectation is that you have enough data to um, go to the AMA and ask for a category one code. So it's, it's a method that is very useful to collect data across the United States uh, for how many doctors are actually using it and to also track outcomes. It is, once it's established, that code must be reported instead of the category one unlisted code because an unlisted code doesn't give you enough information to collect and uh, sub either submit to the FDA or to CMS as proof that it is actually becoming the standard of care. And that data can be used by healthcare professionals, insurers, health services, uh, everybody to show that the emerging technology is, 
is sound and better than what's currently being used. So just a short summary for milestones that we would need to hit to achieve insurance coverage. And these aren't in exactly like in a chronological order um, because certainly people have already published the phase two um, data, I would, I would expect, because the phase two has uh, come to a close, correct? But getting a category three CPT, CPT code is critical for being able to pull that data from across the United States, FDA approval, and at that point, the revision of the Schedule One status, which I believe MDMA is going to be the first Schedule One drug that could uh, meet that rescheduling, which is pretty impressive. Uh, again, documentation is key in well-respected peer-reviewed literature in the United States, and that will lead to uh, the creation of a Category One CPT code, um, which gets you a little closer to getting reimbursed. All of that data gets submitted to CMS. Hopefully, they will approve it. And then once CMS approves it, that's when private insurance follows. So this entire process can take, it can sometimes take decades. Um, I'm hopeful that if the data is convincing enough and it becomes uh, used often enough across the United States, maybe it'll only take five to 10 years. But until that time, patients are going to be paying out of pocket for it. Let there be light. Thank you. Yeah, let there be light. MDMA got put on a fast track to um, go through the FDA trials because it had such a high efficacy rate, right? Is there any possibility to do something similar to getting it through this insurance mess? Um, we would, we would need to get the codes established. We'd have to go all the way, either we'd have to go all the way to a CPT code level one. So we would need the temporary code uh, just to pull data that this is widespread use. So in order to become standard of care, uh, many, 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 many physicians have to use it. So although the, the clinical data from the uh, clinical trials and all the phases is convincing enough to get it approved by the FDA. Just because the FDA approves something doesn't mean that insurance companies will cover it. So, is there an idea of how much it will cost? Because the MDMA itself isn't that expensive, but it can't be taken without the, the double therapist, right? The, um, yeah, it is. There's a certain protocol, and that protocol will will define what the code represents. And then everyone that uses this service will be expected to follow that same protocol. Otherwise, you can't use the code to report it. And you would be back in your unlisted CPT code doing your own thing with that particular patient. So we really would like everybody to get on board across the United States once we can get FDA approval. Um, but it'll be a cash-only basis for patients. So. With two therapists, yeah, it's kind of expensive. Two therapists in what, like three sessions, like pre, during, and after? I can imagine it might be over $1,000 yeah. at least, yeah. So the insurance in this com country is not, um, it's for profit. So <laughs> it does take a lot of work to actually convince them to cover things. So uh, Europe and other countries tend to kind of follow America quite a bit. Do you have any information about the other countries that are less corporate in their insurance? Are there medical coverage adopting it once it's a few groups? Um, Europe has different standards. So the trials that run over there are just a little different, uh, organized differently. Uh, a lot of times they'll approve things faster than we will because 
we have some particularly cumbersome um, channels that we have to go through to get FDA approval and then CMS approval and then insurance coverage. Well, there's hope. It could go faster Yeah, so, yeah, that, but if you're not, um, you know, if you're not an actual citizen over there, then you'd still be paying cash. 